Today I'm going to be replacing the oil filter housing gaskets and oil cooler gasket on an N55 on an X5, but this would apply to any vehicle with the N55 twin turbo engine. We start by removing the air intake tube. There's a tab right here that you can press. Sometimes this takes some effort to pop it free. I've already released it. And then back here, this is going to just twist and pull out, which just pulls straight back, easier with two hands. You do have this connection here to the air box, and you have to lift these up to separate your wiring from your air box before we take the air box completely out. Now these connections I've removed, they just are rubber grommets and they pull straight up off of the metal hangers, these three metal hangers right here on the side. Using the clamp for the air box, this is a six millimeter or you can just use a regular screw. This is just a six millimeter driver that I have. Just grab the bottom of the air box at the intake and just give it a pull upwards to pop it free and same thing in the back it's just held on by rubber clips underneath press clips that when you remove it you just pop it up and push it back down okay with it fully released go ahead and wiggle it free make sure your gasket stays on <clears throat> take that out of the way looks like one of my uh, rubber holders for the airbox stayed which I'll just pop that off and reinstall it in the airbox. See this just has a slot locator and I put a little bit of lube on there and just have to work it back down into the slot. That's all set. I do need to take the vanity cover off. That's pretty simple. Again, it's, this just lifts up. Just press it down. And it goes into two slots back there. Just make sure your rubber grommets stay in place. Okay, get this out of the way. We do have to take the intake manifold off to get one of the bolts for the oil filter housing. This front cross brace needs to come off. Uh, there's also the cable here for the latches. So you just have to lift them free from the holders to remove the cable. So that, that floats out of the way. And we're going to take this cross member off. Loosened up the 13 millimeter screws here. Take those out and you have to be careful not to crack anything on this so you just lift it up you have to slide it over to the side so that you can feed it out see I'm sliding it this way past the hose over here so I can lift it up be careful for the AC line and, and sneak it out don't lift up too hard. Now I'm above this line and I'm just going to slide it over and out. Alright, we're going to detach these hoses here, the AC lines, for access to the bolts. We have to unclip. This is for the line that goes down to the vacuum pump. And we're going to detach. There's a clip behind this plastic wiring holder on the back side that you press, lift it up, move the foam out of the way, and that'll give us access to pull back the intake manifold once we get the bolts free. These are press tabs. You have to squeeze both sides to release the tabs. It can kind of be a pain in the butt. Sometimes if you use a pair of pliers, you can squeeze them without breaking them. They can be brittle, so you have to be careful. 
There's a little clip, you can just move everything out of the way carefully. That just frees everything up so you can pull the intake back. I'll pop the lines off. These are just clipped into these plastic holders. They just push out. Okay, take a bungee, you can hook it all the way up to the wiper arm just to give you some space. Okay, there's a clip on the back side of the wiring harness holder. It's just have to press it and lift up, which is going to release the slider. Just push the foam out of the way you need access to the 11 millimeter nut. Okay, so we're just going to move the wiring out of the way. It just goes into the plastic locators. Just move everything out of the way so you have access to the 11 millimeter nuts for the intake manifold. Okay, these holders for the wiring harness, you pull down and then lift up and it releases and you can rotate them up and out of the way. Okay, so these are 11 millimeters. The first one here is actually a bolt. So just, you really can't get it wrong because the other one is stud. Switch to a quarter inch because it's a little tight to get the one by the vacuum pump line. Okay, continue taking off. 11 millimeters, you have a magnet, it's pretty helpful so you don't drop them. And just work your way all the way to the back. Make sure everything is clean. You don't want to pull an intake manifold back and have something drop into the intake ports. Okay, and then there's two more, I believe, in the back. This one's a little tougher. You have to go on the back side of the harness, and you got to feel for it. Once you're on it, you'll find it, but you have to get on it, and then uh, not something you really catch on a video. You just have to feel for it, and then remove it. Right here on the intake, you have to pop this down to, to detach the harness. That's going to be in the way, and then we're going to pull the intake manifold back just enough to get to the hidden bolt for the oil filter housing. And a lot of times these intake gaskets are pretty robust, and you don't have to replace them. If you are going to replace them, you need to pull the intake manifold back farther to access them, but most of the time you don't have to. So a little wiggling to free it up 
and you just need to pull it back just enough to open this up to get to the bolt right there. You're going to need e-torx, you're going to need an e10. I like this one because it's on a swivel, this is a snap-on tool. I would recommend it. And then you need an E12 for the cooler. The E10 on the swivel is going to allow you to get to the one on the back side and the smaller ones. Mm -hmm. Just use a plastic garbage bag to cover the belts to protect them from coolant and oil. And we're just going to start with the cooler using the E12s. There's one on the bottom. You're going to lose a little bit of coolant. Make sure you've depressurized the cooling system by opening up the cap. Preferably this is done on a cold engine, not a hot engine. Okay, and then you put the cap back on which is going to hold in some of the uh, coolant from just pouring out. Yep, and you can see that the plastic is actually working really well so that it's not going to drip down onto your belt. Yep, looks like it's been leaking. Alright, we're going to, you have a clip on the hose. We're going to take the hose off so that we can remove the housing to clean the bottom. And this is going to just wiggle free. Tuck it in on the side. Okay, unlock the oil pressure switch, just the tab it slides out. Okay, you're gonna use our long extension in E8 swivel to get to the one that's down on the side of the intake manifold just below it. Unscrew that one and remove it. You can see it right here. And I'm using an E8 ratchet, ratcheting, ratchet, sorry, wrench to uh, remove this one. You don't want to touch the hose. A lot of times if you touch the hose, it will actually break. So you can use this to loosen it up and then you can uh, slide the whole housing back. Sometimes they don't want to unscrew as easy as this, and that's when you have to slide the housing back. Looks like this one's coming off pretty easy. All right, now you're ready to take the filter housing off. You're just going to gently pry or give it a little tap with a rubber mallet if you have it, and it's off. And this is the gasket that usually fails, and you can see it's, it's just crushed from time and heat and expansion. Alright, so I'm wipe down the cooler of just the excess oil and dirt and then I'm going to use a scotch Brite pad to clean the ceiling surface. You can just chuck them on the ground. You 
you're looking for any kind of pitting, if you do have pitting on the sealing surface, it is still going to leak. If you do have pitting or there's a score mark on the cooler, you're going to have to replace the cooler. Pretty uncommon though. Yep, looks good. Use a little bit of brake clean and just polish off the surface, remove any kind of oil residual. Same thing on the surface of the engine, you want to just wipe everything clean. You can block off the coolant port to keep it clean, just make sure to take it back out, you don't want to leave that in there. And then go ahead and clean up the oil residue. Now on N52's I've seen pitting on uh, the surface so sometimes you can actually use JB Weld and you can actually re kind of weld it together and then sand it down. It takes multiple times to get it nice and smooth and filled. And again you need to check the sealing surface. Um, this looks like it's perfect thankfully. If you have any pitting then, I mean, you wouldn't want to replace the uh, cylinder head for this. That would be the only way to fix it other than using like JB and then smoothing it out to try to get a good sealing surface. Mm -hmm. So just scotch bright everything. Don't use anything overly abrasive because you will create scoring and uh, potentially create a leak. Just as a side note, on N52 engines, sometimes this cylinder head bolt, external cylinder head bolt head will break off and it won't have correct tension and you actually get an oil leak from that location. Sometimes you can actually walk the bolt out and just retorque that one. The only thing that I worry about, if you have one broken there, you might have more broken under the valve cover. So you really should remove the valve cover and make sure any of them the other ones are intact. Usually it's the ones in the front that break on an N52. Alright, remove your coolant plug. Just going to clean the housing with some degreaser so it's nice and clean when it goes back on. Try not to get anything in the electric connector for the sensor. If you do, you just have to clean it out make sure it's dry before reinstallation. A wire brush is helpful. Okay, it's just gonna do a final rinse with brake clean. Don't spray directly into the housing ports. I am using BMW Genuine Parts, so this is 1142-8637-821 and 1142-8637-820. Okay, going to install. You really can't install this wrong. And they have little locator nipples on the sides which provide pressure and hold the gasket in so you don't have to use any RTV, you don't have to use any StarTac or any kind of spray. In fact, you shouldn't. Same thing with uh, the cooler gasket and the main oil filter housing gasket. They just push in and they'll lock into place. Okay, now it's uh, simply reinstalling it. Make sure that your electric connector is dry and clean. Yep, looks good, I think. Yep, looks dry. Alright, so we're going to place it back on. And there are three different size bolts. The long one goes on top. You really can't do it wrong. Well, I suppose there's somebody out there that can. <laughs> right, and then the medium size one goes under the intake manifold.
and you don't want to tighten any of them until all of them are started. And then you have a smaller one that goes at the bottom, cylinder head to oil filter housing. This one's usually a little bit more of a pain, just the angle's tougher. Okay, don't cross thread it. You should be able to work it in without using a ratchet. get the thread started. If you have to clean the threads out, blow it out. If you have some dirt and debris, it can make it a little bit more difficult. Yep, looks like it's caught. So if you pull it out now and you use and you have your ratcheting wrench, which then you can actually use that to pull it out, get it on there, and then walk it back down and snug it up. So you're going to start with this one because the other three are already in and started. We can go ahead and draw it in with this bottom bolt. I'm pretty sure it's just gear wrench that makes these remember correctly. Yeah, gear wrench. Definitely something you should have in your toolbox. Alright, we're going to snug these up. The housing to cylinder head, these two up here are 22 newton meters. There's a lot of people out there that like to torque everything to spec. So we're just going to do a gentle snug. Now, interesting enough, that bottom one, the heat exchanger, which is the oil filter housing, two cylinder head, which I think that's an M8, and that's 60 newton meters on the bottom one. All right, so these were 22 newton meters. We are using a torque wrench. And that bottom one is less, but you're gonna have to go, not this one right here, but the one on the very bottom over here is less, but you, know, you, you really can't get in there very well with the torque wrench, so you have to go by feel. So if you do the other ones, um, snug this down, you know, we're using the gear wrench, you know, just, you should be able to tell, don't over tighten it because you will break something. All right, now we're going to reseat the intake manifold. All right, reattach your wiring. And just gently maneuver your intake manifold back into place. You have the two bolt intakes first. You want to get those started first before you tighten down any of the nuts. Now you can gently snug these because putting the nuts over the studs, that's going to be easy. and start all of the nuts on the studs all the way to the far back. I'm going to do that now. Just an additional note, the harness in the back, you want to make sure that you don't pinch the back harness when you reseat the intake. We did only move it so that it was out slightly this way, but if you do pinch it in the back, you will cause some damage to the wiring harness and you could short something out. 
And remember, the, there's the one in the far back that you have to reach around and just go by feel. And you can just start it by hand and then tighten it up with your uh, ratchet. Use a torque wrench and just tighten all of your intake to 15 newton meters. We're at reseeding the foam. You see that tab right there? The foam fits right over that plastic nipple. And then after we get that in, we're just going to reseat the harness. And lock that in. Uh, don't forget to put the clips for the harness on. We took them off. They just slide over, lock into place. Okay, reinstall your harness into the clips. Plug in the sensor for the oil pressure. Okay, reinstall the hose. Make sure the clip is closed and just wiggle and lock it on. Give it a tug, make sure it's solid. Next step is to install the oil cooler. Swing it back around. And start all of the bolts. The one on the bottom, you do have to go by feel, should be three. And the torque spec on these are going to be 19 newton meters. Okay, tighten down to 19 newton meters, you know, around. You can go up one or two. We'll take our plastic garbage bag off that protected our belt from oil and coolant. Looks like it did a good job. And now we can reinstall the AC lines. Into the holders. Just as a quick side note, make sure that this is the cable for the hood latch. Make sure that this is above everything. Not here, obviously, but above the AC lines. You can actually install it below, and then uh, it'll be a problem because you won't be able to hook it onto the cross brace. Okay, next step is to hook up the vacuum lines. They just push in and lock in. It's harder to get them off than to put them on. And then make sure to reclip it here. All right, we're going to put the cross brace on. You do have to be cautious when you're putting this on. Remember, you have to slide it past to get it in on the opposite side and then slide it back under. You got to be careful for this line here and the AC line. If you put too much pressure on the AC line, I've heard of people breaking them off. And uh, you don't want to be sprayed with refrigerant. Okay, just put these on and snug them down. I don't have a torque spec for these. The German torque spec, good and tight. Instake, in, install the intake air box. And it just presses down into those rubber tabs and snug it down. 
remember to reinstall the wiring on the sides. They just slide into place. Those three connections. Okay, install the snorkel. Lock it in and lock it in. And then the vanity cover. Easy install. Slide the back in first and then it just pushes down into place. Okay, now you're not done. You still need to fill the cooling system which we're going to use. We're using BMW coolant and we're going to fill it. We're not going to use the vacuum bleeder on this. We're going to show you how to just use the electric coolant pump in the vehicle to bleed the system. So you fill it up to the top and then we have to go into the car. Alright, so I set up a charger. You have your positive and here's your negative because we need to turn the vehicle on so we want to maintain the battery voltage and we're going to run the pump in bleed mode. I'm going to show you how to do that now. Alright, so go ahead and turn the ignition on. Don't start the car, just turn the ignition on. And then you go to the lowest air setting and the highest temp. And then you press on the accelerator pedal for 10 seconds. And I just heard it kick on, so let's run out and take a look. So you can see that the pump is running and it's actually pushing the air out. And as it pushes the air out, you refill it with coolant. Now we didn't lose that much, so we shouldn't have to top it off that much. So if you don't have a vacuum bleeder, you can do this. As long as your vehicle has the electric coolant pump. This can't be done on like an N62. The normal bleed procedure takes about 12 minutes and you just have to keep an eye on the coolant level. You know, once you're almost at full, it's usually just going to remove the smaller air pockets. Let it run the full 12 minutes again, keep your charger on. You can see it actually pulled the battery voltage down to 11.9, so it is a good idea to have a charger on here. I'm going at 12 amps. Goes the pump. And you can run this again, just make sure your battery voltage is good. You could always charge it a little bit and then do a, a second rebleed. And once this is all done, you can put your cap on and you're done. So we're going to finish up. Hopefully this video is helpful. Thanks for watching. Likes and positive comments are greatly appreciated.